So this is going to be section 1.4, examples part two. So they want me to find the limit as x approaches negative seven from the left, and they give me my function here. Now I don't have a graph, so I can't just visually look at it. I could use my graphing calculator, but remember what I mentioned about the test in section 1.3, is you need to be able to show me on paper what is going on, okay? Um, so I need to be able to see how you're getting the values that you're getting. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the graphing calculator and graph it and then see what is um, going on there. But if you choose to do that, you do need to draw it on paper. So if I go to my graph here and I write x over the square root of x squared minus 49. Let me delete all the rest of this. Let me get back under there, minus 49. There we go. And I graph it. Well, I'm graphing it on a really weird table, so let me fix that. Um, zoom standard. Here we go. Now I can't see what's going on in the middle, so I'm going to zoom out and see if it will let me see. Nope, there's nothing going on in the middle. So I'm gonna go back to zoom standard. So basically, I have the graph which looks like this. So here's negative 7, here's positive 7. This part of the graph is going up, and then that way, and this part of the graph is going downward, and here. So I basically have a horizontal asymptote here, and I have a vertical asymptote at 7, and a vertical asymptote at negative 7 and nothing in the middle, okay? That's my graph according to my graphing paper, my graphing calculator, sorry. So if I'm looking at the limit to the left of negative seven, that means down here, okay? So if I'm looking at it here, you'll notice that as I approach negative seven from the left, this thing is going down forever, which means that this is actually going to negative infinity, okay? Now, we talked about this before. When that's happening, the limit does not exist, okay? Now, another way that you could do this problem is you could create a chart. And so sometimes the computer will give you the numbers already, um, but I don't know whether or not they will. So they may give you some values like this. and then have negative seven, right? And so you'll start to notice, um, oh, I think they go one more and then they go negative seven. And so what you do is you start plugging these into your function. So one way to do that is to, um, to use the storing capability of your calculator. So if I type x over the square root of x squared, minus 49. And I'm going to hit enter, but I'm going to ignore that first response because I don't know what the computer has stored as x. Now what I'm going to do is negative 7.1, and I'm going to hit this button here that says STO, store, and I'm going to hit my x button and hit enter. Then I'm going to go back up to my expression and hit enter again, and it's going to plug it in. Okay. Then I'm going to do negative 7.01, store x, Go back up, hit enter, and it plugs it in. Then negative 7.001, store x, hit enter. Go back up, hit enter again, hit enter again. Negative 59. Then negative 7.0001, store x. Go back to my function, hit enter to plug in. Negative one, 187.0. Dot, dot, dot. So you notice these numbers are going further and further and further into negative. So eventually they do go to negative infinity. Okay. So whether you use a table, the numerical approach, or you use a graph, the graphing approach, 
you do need to justify how you determine that the limit doesn't exist. Simply stating the limit doesn't exist does not suffice on a test. Okay. Similarly, with this problem, I would do the same thing. But now I'm approaching positive 7 on the right. So that means I would be picking um, 7.1, positive. 7. Point, um, zero 0.01. 7, oh, sorry, not negative. 7.001. 7.0001 and so on and so forth until I got to positive 7. Okay. Um, just trying to level out my little graph paper here. And I would do the same thing as before. Now this one's a little bit tricky because you're going to have the absolute value up here, but it really won't make a difference because all of my numbers are bigger than 7. So when I subtract 7, they're going to be positive. So really, I'm going to end up with the same number over the same number. So in this case, I'm going to end up with 1, 1, 1, 1. So what's going to happen as it keeps, they're all the same, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the limit here will actually equal 1. Okay. Now that's the one-sided limit. If I tried to do the other side, it would always be negative. And so the actual limit without the plus or minus wouldn't exist. But when you're just doing a one side of the limit, you just want to see what it's doing on one side only. Now, I'm not sure I can put this in here, but I think there is a way. Let me see. Yes, absolute value. Um, and what's my numerator? X minus 7. So divided by X minus 7. I'll go to the graph. And so you see what's happening here. That's what the graph looks like. So if I draw it on my piece of paper, here's 7. I'm going to say this is 1 and this is negative 1. Here I have an open circle. And it's going in that direction. Here I have an open circle and it's going in this direction. Okay. And, um... So when you're going to the left, it um, doesn't exist. It's approaching negative 1. If I'm going from the right, as I was, I would be approaching positive 1. Okay. So this was what I was looking at. I was looking at from the right of 7, so I was going here, and that y value was 1. So again, you can use the numerical approach, or you can use the graphing approach. Either way, but you have to show on paper what you're doing. 